Okay, today we're gonna to change the freewheel on the Expedition by Electric. And so there is a difference between a freewheel and a cassette. A lot of the older bikes, budget bikes, are gonna have what's called a freewheel and they perform the same way, but they're not compatible with each other. So you do wanna make sure you get something called a freewheel and not a cassette. A cassette will not work. So the reason why we're doing this is that we're gonna increase the low gear for better hill climbing ability. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this a little bit closer and I'll kind of talk about this versus the stock gearing. All right, before we get too involved in this, as excited as I am, I do wanna warn you that this mod is not going to be for everyone. I'm very excited, but it's not gonna be for everyone. If you got your expedition out of the box and you started climbing hills and you're like, wow, this is great. This is a great hill climber then do not perform this mod, okay? You're spending extra money, you're spending extra time, you may break something, you may lose some pieces. It's not worth doing if you already are very satisfied with the bike. If you're like me, however, and you live in a very hilly city and you were surprised that your single gear 52 volt bike climbs better than your geared expedition that was very, 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 very uh, marketed as a hill climbing machine, then you're gonna to wanna to change this mod or do this mod ASAP. One more thing, for you guys who are not familiar with how this works, we are changing a seven speed gear with another seven speed gear, okay? We're gonna maintain the same high gear, but we are increasing the low gear, meaning its ability to climb hills. So that change is very, very big. So the existing one is a 11 by 28T and the new one is 11 by 34T. So you're going to see in a, in a video later, but the first few gears or the highest gears are going to be very gradual and all of a sudden there's going to be a huge jump to a low gear. And so what that means for your for practicality and your day-to-day -day riding is that you're essentially only going to be riding six effective gears and your seventh or lowest gear, first gear, is going to be your emergency gear. So in a sense, you're kind of losing one speed, it's kind of a seven speed to six speed, and then you have a bonus or a uh, emergency gear. Not all of you are gonna like that, all right? Because the current seven speed, every speed, every cog is very gradual and very smooth. That is not going to be the case with the new freewheel where the low gear is gonna be a big jump to a very, very low gear, <laughs> or like Shimano says, a mega range gear. What we're looking at here is the stock freewheel, and this is an 11 tooth by 28 tooth. So the smaller the or the lower number of teeth is what's gonna give you the high gear, and the larger ring is gonna give you the low gear. So the larger the ring, the lower the gear, the smaller the ring, the higher the gear. So this is an 11 tooth, as is the new one, is also 11 teeth. So we're not gonna lose any high end or high gear range. So they're both gonna be 11 tooth. However, you can see the massive size difference of the low gear. This is a 34T versus a 28T. So how do they get away with making both of these a uh, seven speed? So how they do it is that there's a big gap. You notice that the rings here, the cogs are gradually getting larger and larger and larger. Whereas here it's gradually larger and then bam, there's a big one. So Shimano made something called a mega range. And this is basically a knockoff of the mega range where you have these six usable gears that you're gonna use uh, throughout the day. And then for the emergency gear, you're gonna shift down and it's gonna be super, super low. So again, the bigger the ring, the lower the gear. And I have installed something similar to this already on the bike. And so I do know that we do not need to change the chain length, which is great. Okay, some of you are for sure gonna be asking me where I got the free wheel. Okay, so it's made by a company called Driftmatic. So right now on Amazon, it is for $31, $32 uh, after tax shipped. And on AliExpress, where Amazon resellers buy their stuff to sell on Amazon, they're selling for about $10 cheaper. So right now, the price difference isn't that extreme, but does fall in the whole 30 to 50% uh, range meaning the people who buy stuff on AliExpress, they do mark up their stuff about 30 to 50% generally. So if you're in a hurry, um, or if you just really want it, or the price difference isn't that much to you, then go and get on Amazon. Uh, they have a better return policy. You get it sooner. You probably already have an Amazon account. Whereas for the cheaper one from AliExpress, not all of you have AliExpress accounts, and it does take between one and two weeks for the product to get to you, and there are no returns. So up to you on where you want to get it. 
Before you get started, it is important that you have this tool. This I bought from a company called Park Tool and it is to remove the freewheel. So just go ahead and just Google freewheel remover tool and you'll see this. So basically this is gonna go up in here and then you're gonna be able to turn this and then release the existing freewheel so you can thread the new one back on. You will need a wrench and I have an adjustable wrench so that we can go ahead and uh, loosen this up once it's on the freewheel later. And this is optional. <laughs> this is just a giant tube. It's a PVC piece that I'm gonna use to have a little bit more leverage because uh, sometimes the freewheel is really stuck on there and I need some leverage to really pull that out. But this may or may not be needed depending on how tight it is, how strong you are, <laughs> but we're gonna keep that right there. You also need an Allen wrench set to remove the torque arm. Before we go on, I do want to let you know about Park Tools. So there's a company called Park Tools and they have been in the bike business forever. And they have very, very good tutorials on how to do stuff like adjust your derailleur, change your brakes or change your freewheel. But in this case, I'm adding to this and doing a new video because this is specific to the electric by Expedition. And so it's going to be a little bit tricky uh, doing it because the bike is so big. Originally, I thought I could find a really cool way to just prop it up like a, like a make your own kind of bike stand and then pull the wheel off. But that did not work well for me. So I, what I did ultimately to change the free wheel on this is I turned the bike upside down. So that's gonna be kind of a, a pain, but it's gonna be much, much easier. Gravity is gonna be on your side when you're removing and installing the wheel and just the access and being able to see everything is gonna be much, much, much better. So don't try to prop it up. I do recommend that you just turn it upside down. The warning though is you just wanna look at your parts that are gonna to touch the ground and just make sure that you have some sort of uh, pad or towel or something so you're not scratching uh, any parts on, on the floor. All right, not the smoothest transition. Make sure if you have any accessories like a cell phone mount, that it's gonna be okay. So right now it's actually resting on that. It's pretty beefy, so I'm not that concerned, but just be aware if you have any other things that may be worry. I should have removed the runner boards first because I do need to access the axle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off on both sides. All right, you will need a couple extra zip ties because we are gonna be cutting this zip tie and this zip tie to remove the wire for the motor in order to remove the wheel. For this cable, it's very important that you pull outwards and do not twist. It's not a twist. If you twist, you are going to break the prongs that are inside. So you want to pull it out straight. Next, go ahead and take photos, a snapshot, a video or something of the spacer here, and then this piece, and then this locking nut, and then that spacer. You want to be aware of the layout and the order on both sides. We're going to go ahead and remove the axle, but uh, instead of using the adjustable wrench like I mentioned earlier, I'm personally going to use a socket wrench. This is going to be an 18 millimeter. So again, it's very critical that you remember the order of the hardware. Again, snap a picture if you haven't already. We're going to take out the axle. This is going to be on the outermost. And then this locking nut or locking washer and then this spacer and then is going to be this guy and that will require an allen tool and this is a three millimeter Allen. And there is a washer here, so just be very aware that there's a washer. I was having trouble removing this piece, and it turned out that it was just turned too far, so I just tapped it like that, and it came loose. So we're going to pull that out and put that back over here. All right, we are now on the right side of the bike. And again, the 18 millimeter Nut. Okay. 
And then we're gonna have the locking washer. And then we have the regular spacer, regular washer. And then again, we have that three millimeter Allen wrench or Allen screw that we're gonna remove. So the reason why other bikes don't have the silver piece or black piece on the other side is because this is a piece that prevents the wheel from spinning out under extreme torque. Also called a torque arm. All right, so again, this one has a washer on it that's loose, so don't lose that. And then this should come right off, and it does. Just remember, the silver one is on the right side of the bike, and the black one is on the left side of the bike. I should have mentioned this earlier, but so that we have the most slack, we're gonna change the gear so that the chain is on the smallest cog or the highest gear. In this case, it's gonna, I'm gonna move it to seventh gear. Just a little tip for laying out your hardware. I like to do this so I remember this is on the outside on this side of the bike. Next by this, 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 and then same over here. It's just that I don't forget. As you're removing the wheel, I just wanna remind you there is a nut right here, okay? So when you pull the wheel off, don't let this slide out. And if it does, make sure you keep track of it. We are gonna to need to put that piece back in. All right, after everything we've done, we should be able to just lift the wheel off, but it was very tight. And the reason why is because this axle was twisted a little bit too much. I think after you ride it for a while, it just starts twisting on its own and it's just has a lot of friction here. So what I did was I just took this wrench and I just moved it just very gently a little bit so that it came loose and we can now remove the wheel. I just wanna make sure it was loose and that it's able to come off. We're gonna bring the camera over to this side here. And the reason why is because the chain is gonna be the difficult part. So ideally I'm not gonna break the chain off and have to put it back on. I was worried I had to do that last time, but I'm not gonna do that because I didn't have to. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of manipulate it so that, make sure you're wearing gloves, so that I can pull the chain off without uh, bending anything. You wanna be very careful the derailleur. Alrighty. So again, be very gentle with the derailleur. All right, and now we have the wheel removed from the bike, and this is the free wheel. We're gonna go ahead and remove that using that tool that we had earlier. This is the stock one, the 1128T, and this here, I had a 1434T. So this one does not have as high of a gear as the stock one. So I'm actually gonna take this out and put this in. So this has the same low gear, 34, 34, but this has an 11 tooth high gear, whereas this is a 14 tooth. So this one, when I switched from stock to this, I actually got a drop in the speed because I didn't have my highest gear. I happen to have this laying around for another project and that's why I put that on there and I was a little desperate. <laughs> and then eventually I realized I did miss having that 11 tooth. So I did purchase this 11 tooth and we're gonna swap this out and put this guy in. Remember, we do have this from the other side as well. So just make sure when you pull this off that you're keeping it uh, in a safe place and you're not losing that. Now we're gonna get our tool and we're gonna stick it in here and we're gonna wrench that off. All right, so this is just gonna slip on here like this. Should be flush and we're gonna get our wrench and go ahead and uh, remove that. All right, getting that kind of snug. And then the next part I can't do while holding the camera, so I'm gonna resituate it, and we'll see that come off. Okay, as you're doing this, make sure when you're pushing down, you don't slip and then your hands get gouged by the cogs. So be very, very careful. So lefty-loosey, ready-tighty. 
can't do it and I don't want to hurt myself, so I'm going to go ahead and use that tube that I had earlier. If you're stronger than I am, you might not need to do this. Ooh. All right. I'm go ahead and just keep turning this and you'll see the free will get t higher and higher and eventually it slides right off. All right, there we go. Now we put the new one back on and then reverse the process. All right, out with the old, in with the new. When you put this on, you just make sure the inner threads of the freewheel go on the threads here. And just make sure when you're doing it, you do it by hand first and you're not cross-threading. You do not want to cross-thread this or you will be in trouble. So make sure it goes on nice and easy. And technically, as you ride, it'll tighten, but I would rather tighten it myself. So righty tighty, it's gonna go in that direction. And again, do not hurt yourself. <laughs> if you gouge your hands into your gears, it's not gonna be a good day. Okay. All right. Now we're going to just reverse the process and get this back on the bike. Getting it back on is gonna be a little tricky. My finger is gonna represent the axle. It's gonna go here. And you have to kind of manipulate this, but basically it's gonna go in like that. You're not gonna be able to see it from my angle because I'm gonna be right up against it. But remember to negotiate the rotor and the caliper with all of this. So you are, you are gonna have to spin the axle so that it lines up against the hole. You'll notice that on the axle, there's two flat sides. I know it's hard to see with this angle, but there's two flat sides and that needs to slot into the dropout. All right, after you put everything back together, do make sure that your shifting is smooth and that the chain is moving along all the cogs smoothly and it doesn't go past this chain ring or cog rather, and doesn't go past the, the highest gear. And so if it does have some excessive noise or it's not changing properly, do go and adjust the derailleur. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for Park Tools. And that is a company that does bike mechanics and I've been using them for a long time and they've been around for a while and they make excellent videos. Okay, <laughs> I know that took a while to do, um, but hopefully now you get the point. Right, we are finally done with the freewheel installation on the Expedition. So hopefully uh, you guys learned something. And um, if you did do this installation, go ahead and get on the Facebook groups or comment here and let me know how it went. I uh, would love to hear about your experience with the new freewheel.